Uh, before I get started, I'm going to give you all an opportunity to be a part of a round robin study to do a POPs analysis. How's that sound? And we're going to do it right here. So I have about a 30 second video to explain how this works and uh, then we're going to let you do this analysis while I'm doing my presentation. That sound good? Mr. Turtle, how many licks does it take to get to the Tootsie Roll Center of a Tootsie Pop? Why, he never made it without biting. Ask Mr. Owl. Mr. Owl, how many licks does it take to get to the Tootsie Roll Center of a Tootsie Pop? Let's find out. One, two, three, three. How many licks does it take to get to the Tootsie Roll Center of a Tootsie Pop? The world may never know. I'm probably showing my age, but that is a commercial from the 1970s. And so uh, we're going to let you each find out how many licks it takes to get to the center of a Tootsie Roll Tootsie Pop. So Heinz is going to hand those out while I'm doing the presentation. <laughs> You think you guys can all handle that? All right, that's what we're here to talk about. We're talking about these types of compounds here, and we're going to show you the versatility of using a GC triple quad to perform some of these analysis. How many of you own some type of triple quad, either LC or GC? Okay, some of you? All right. These are two of our models. We have TSQ8000, and we have the TSQ Quantum XLS Ultra. The Ultra is the high-end instrument. So what makes it so special? It's called selectivity. And uh, I want to just show you how a triple quad works and why it's so selective. This is what the inside of the TSQ8000 looks like. We have an ion source, which then goes through an ion guide, which is S-shaped goes into the first quadrupole, second quadrupole, which is the collision cell, the third quadrupole, and then into the electron multiplier. So what happens? In Q1, you have your ions entering the quadrupole, and what happens is it acts like SIM, a SIM analysis on a single quad. You've picked your ions that you want to look at, but what happens in SIM when you have matrix that has the same ion. It looks like this. You get a deformed peak of some short sort with a shoulder or extra wide and so you end up with higher results than what you should be getting. So we send those ions into quadrupole two where you use energy and argon gas to then split those ions, which then goes into quad three, that again filters down to that ion that is specifically for the end light that you're looking for. And then that goes into the detector. So instead of getting a peak coming out of quad one, with the shoulder on it, you get a nice symmetrical peak coming out of the third quadrupole. So we've been talking about dioxins and forans. Um, so I want to present some data, again like comparison that we just had between high res and the triple quad, both doing the same type of analysis uh, based on 1613B we have samples that are uh, sediment soil samples. Both methods started out with using the ACE for the extraction, followed by cleanup. And here are the GC parameters. Two microliters were injected using a 60 meter column, 5 MS. Source temperatures, ionization, Collision energy. Here are the 
transitions that were used with the parent and the products for all the different compounds. And here's what it looks like. This is uh, the CS1 standard diluted 10x. And you can see the, the tetra all the way down to the octa. And you can see the concentrations there and the really nice peak shapes and separation. Here's a close-up of the, of the Tetra, diluted 10x. Now, why is this important that you can see at lower concentrations and that you run your standards? Because if you can see lower, your detection limits are lower. Uh, here we're taking the CS and run multiples and then diluted it down 2x, 4x, 5x, 6x, all the way down to 10x. And you can see how the LOD changes and gets lower. Here's the Tetra in some different types of samples, fly ash, soil, and sediment samples. And you can see the transitions used for each one of those. First, first one's the quantitation ion, the other one is the confirmation, confirmation ion. Now, here are some reference samples that were analyzed both by, uh, uh, that were analyzed by the uh, triple quad, showing the results compared to what the actual values were. And you can see the Tetra is a little bit higher on the uh, CRM 490. And all the rest of them are less than 20% difference. And you notice that there's always, it, they tend to be a little bit more on the positive side <coughs> with the triple quad. And you'll see that's pretty much the same when we look at some data on the high res. So here we're comp comparing three different samples along with one of the reference standards. And you can see the same as we just saw in the last presentation that the results are fairly similar, uh, but that the GCMS tends to be a little bit higher. And of course we want the, an the answers to be precise. So here's an example of 100 femtograms on column in fat with a CV of 12.5%. And confirmation is done by ion ratios. And here's a, a chart or graph showing you how close the ion ratios are to the calculated values. This example, we're showing different types of food products with a comparison of what was the results from high res versus those by the GC triple quad. Next, I want to talk about short chain chlorinated paraffins. They don't come off as one nice distinct peak, but a certain time range. Here's a curve going from 0.1 nanograms per microliter up to 10. And you can see the integration over a period of about five and a half minutes. And here's a repeatability study done at two nanograms per microliter. Percent RSD was about 11%. Something new and emerging are mixed halogenated dioxins with bromine and chlorine attached. These, were, these samples were taken from soil extracts, analyzed on a PCB 8 MS 60 meter column. And here's some typical results of the peaks at 2.4 picograms per microliter in the extract.
Then here's a reproducibility study um, at 2.4 picograms per microliter. And you can see the percent RSD for most of them is less than 10%. Flame retardants, just going to show you a little bit on flame retardants. Uh, peak shapes, curves for 100 and 183. Now most people are running single quad NCI to look at flame retardants. And this is an example comparing a single quad on the top with the triple quad on the bottom in EI, SRM mode. And this is BD47 at 0 .07, 0 0.07 ppb. And you notice there's a big difference in peak shape. Here's another example of house dust, 183 at 0.17 ppb, the top being the single quad in NCI, and the bottom one, EI, on the, same, on the triple quad. Again, shows you the selectivity of the instrument. Another thing I want to talk about is being able to combine different methods into one run. Um, I was just talking to a customer who's taking all their pesticides from three different instruments with three different analysts and going to combine them on a triple quad. Well. We've just combined PAHs, chlorinated pesticides, and PCBs into one run. And we only did, I think it was like 67 compounds, if I remember correctly. So here are the curves for the PA, some of the PAHs, going from two micrograms up to 2,500 per liter. And here are some of the chlorinated pesticides with PCB-153. And here's peak shape with two picograms on column. Here's some replicate data done in different matrices, building materials, soil, water, You see good results. All of them are less than 10%. So, what's good about a triple quad? It's a versatile tool. You can run all kinds of types of compounds. It provides better selectivity than, than a lot of instruments, giving you better signal to noise ratios, which mean lower detection limits. You get to eliminate the matrix through SRM, and you can combine a lot of your methods into one. Have some people to thank from Thermo and some collaborators that we had for a lot of this data.